The attractive blonde known as Katie Starr on the World Wide Web smiled dazzlingly while looking at herself in the mirror and filming the event on her phone camera. Well, my lovely subscribers, I can't believe this day has come, she purred, turning to be in the frame. I couldn't sleep a wink last night. I only hope that my wonderful makeup artist can fix the situation with some magic makeup and hide those shadows under my eyes. Otherwise, my fiancé will run away when he picks up my veil at the altar. Katie laughed gleefully, then raised the camera higher, showing the audience two girls who were fluttering beside her like bees. These are my fairy godmothers for today. Hey girls, wave your hands. Katie introduced the masters and gave them a chance to smile at the phone screen, then shifted her attention back to herself. Anyway, my darlings, soon you'll see my wedding look. You know, it makes me want to cry to think that today I'm going to be Brandon's wife. I've been dreaming about it since I was a little girl. I imagined I'd walk to the archway lined with flowers where my Prince Charming would be waiting for me. And now, my dream is about to become a reality. You know, I hope your dreams will come true too. Don't stop believing in them. And of course, don't stop liking my posts. I will continue to share my life with you, with all possible sincerity. Love, kisses and see you soon. Katie sent an air kiss to the screen and pressed the red button on the phone, stopping the recording. However, as soon as she stopped recording, the radiant smile slid off her face, giving way to irritation. She reviewed the recording and grudgingly grinned. I have a pale face. I'll scare away all my subscribers with this face. She complained to her friend Zoe. The cheerful tone of the blogger and her smile disappeared. Zoe thoughtfully looked at the bride's appearance. You're tanned, Katie. You've recently returned from vacation, she reassured her friend. But Katie did not accept the compliment. She twitched and exclaimed angrily, looking in the mirror at the hairdresser. Hey, are you trying to leave me without hair? Can't you be neater? I paid a lot of money to have these blonde curls on my head, and you just take them out and pull out my hair. Damn it, what a good-for-nothing specialist you are. Excuse me? The hairdresser responded laconically, brushing her client's hair with more care. It should be noted that she was already doing her work carefully and thoroughly. However, Katie always found something to complain about. In the room of the country mansion, located near the beautiful lake, there were four girls. Katie, her maid of honour, and only friend Zoe, a hairdresser and a makeup artist. The beauty workers were doing their best to prepare the bride, but the capricious girl was not satisfied with the result. Katie did not have a pleasant character or tolerance, even on ordinary days. And today, on the day of her wedding, she completely tormented the others. She had already forced the makeup artist to wash off the foundation from her face, adding caustic comments like, What are you doing? I'll put on better makeup myself. Will you stop slowing down? I can't sit around all day waiting for you to learn how to put on makeup. The woman, who had not even begun to apply makeup to the stubborn bride, did not argue. She washed off the rudiments of makeup from her face, then reapplied it the same way. But this time, Katie, having evaluated the result of the makeup artist's labours, nodded. Well, now it's okay. Not perfect, of course, but it will do. She haughtily praised the makeup artist. The girl only pressed her lips together, suppressing a chuckle. She did not take such criticism seriously, although her colleague, the hairdresser, was already beginning to shake with nerves. To relax that morning, the bride and her maid of honour decided to open a bottle of sparkling wine, and they had to open two bottles to shoot the moment on video. The first time, Katie thought that not enough foam came out, but she needed a perfect video for her blog. Zoe only shrugged her shoulders, philosophically deciding that the more champagne she opened and poured into herself today, the easier it would be for her to endure her girlfriend's antics. After the first glass, the maid of honour decided to make a couple of videos too. 
However, Katie was once again dissatisfied. Zoe, are you filming? Turn it off immediately, she shrieked. But you wanted me to. She paused and quoted Katie. Capture every moment of this momentous day for history. Katie snorted and rolled her eyes toward the ceiling. Oh, but you have to use your head, right? And not just do whatever they tell you to do, the bride grumbled. I'm filming for subscribers. They're not interested in looking at my pimples. They want the perfect picture, you know. One day, I took one picture of myself with almost no makeup on, and I'm done with it. Besides, you took pictures of me on my left side. How many times do I have to tell you that you should be on the right? Zoe snorted and changed the phone to a glass. Are you not positioning yourself as a person close to the simple, ordinary girls, a friend for everyone who will advise on cosmetics and share secrets? Katie wanted to object to the naive friend and explain that business cannot be done with sincerity, but she caught a glimpse of her reflection and sharply rose. You're an armless fool. What kind of eyebrows are you making? By your shape, natural eyebrows, started to explain the makeup artist. You are a bride. Your image should be natural and gentle. Isn't that what you wanted? Softness and natural shape are the trend now. Draw natural eyebrows for yourself. Katie got angry, blushing even through the thick foundation. I want them wider. Okay, redo it. I wouldn't speak so arrogantly with a person who can make a clown out of you with one stroke of a brush, giggled Zoe, plumping on the sofa with a glass of sparkling wine. Her words did not embarrass Katie. She twitched her shoulder. Their attendance, Zoe. I pay them money and I expect to get a decent favour, she remarked, not the least bit worried that the makeup artist could hear her. So, they either do their job right in a way that I like, or get the hell out. Right, girls. The aforementioned girls looked at each other but continued to work in silence. Humility was written on their faces, and they desired to finish the job as quickly as possible and then leave the room and forget Katie as a nightmare. Katie took her glass from the dressing table and emptied it halfway in one gulp. After smacking her plump lips, the shape of which she had recently corrected with filler, she looked at the screen of her phone again. She smiled contentedly, turning to her friend. Before the wedding, I had so many new subscribers, she boasted. It will be a sensation. I'm sure there will be more offers from advertisers. There it is, the fame. Oh, I have no doubt it will be an extravaganza, not a wedding, she skeptically remarked to her friend. However, Katie Starr, elated by her success, did not hear the irony in her friend's voice. She enjoyed looking at the comments under her publications. Katie Starr's real name was Catherine McCann. The girl was from a wealthy family, of course, her parents spoiled her and raised her like a princess. But not the kind who needed to know etiquette, foreign languages and ballroom dancing. Katie was allowed to do everything, but she preferred not to do anything and just skim the cream off this life. At some point, she realised that she wanted to brag about her luxurious life to a large audience. That's how she became a blogger. The party girl persona quickly grew stale, leaving her audience bored. Then, the girl created a new image that was close to the people. She began to show an audience of many thousands how she helped orphanages and orphans, how she went to art galleries and benefit evenings, not just fashion shows and nightclubs. However, this lifestyle began to consume her like quicksand. She indulged in ostentatious living filming every moment for her subscribers. A year ago, she met Brandon Arnett, a handsome young man who was not born into wealth, but built his own custom jewellery company from scratch. The company quickly gained popularity and made Brandon a fortune. Brandon and Katie met at an advertising shoot. The PR manager of the company invited Katie as a model, 
paying her for advertising on her blog. Of course, at first, the young man liked Katie outwardly, a beautiful blonde with a naive look of blue eyes and a sincere smile could fall into the heart of any man. Then they started dating. Soon, Brandon noticed the differences between the two Katies, the one next to him and the one who appeared in front of the camera. However, he turned a blind eye to her shortcomings because he had fallen in love. The blogger insisted on a quick wedding and she realized that she wanted to rekindle the interest of the public. She even asked Brandon to propose on camera, although he was modest and preferred to keep such moments intimate. However, who would refuse the bride's request? Katie did not miss the chance of the news hook. The event was preceded by several months of wedding discussions. In the comments, subscribers were wondering, what kind of dress will the bride have? What hairstyle? And what kind of cake? Once Katie achieved this, she didn't want to stop. Recently, she noticed that the subscribers of a pregnant model were literally going crazy, guessing the gender of her future child. When Katie, without hiding her envy, read the comments under the posts of her competitor, she realized her next step. A beautiful pregnancy. She was going to fill her blog with pictures that appealed to the most vulnerable and suggestible audience. Pregnant and nursing mums and naive girls dreaming of a beautiful fairy tale of marriage and a baby. Although Katie didn't care whether she had a son or daughter, she thought it would be the most successful business project, and the care of children could always be shifted to nannies. Brandon adored children, so the bride's talk about their future child was taken with enthusiasm. He believed that children were proof of love. The groom couldn't imagine that for his beloved, they were part of a business plan. Soon the wedding day arrived. Katie prepared for the event carefully, wishing that everything would be perfect. She wanted every step during the ceremony and the celebration to be captured on camera. She promised her subscribers, with tears in her eyes, that she would share every second of the happy event with them. But no matter how Katie planned the celebration, Everything didn't go according to her perfect plan. The girl had been standing at the starting position for half an hour, waiting to go to the flower arch under beautiful music. But the groom and his best man, Emmanuel, didn't come to the wedding, and they didn't answer their phones. Maybe something happened to them, Zoe asked with concern as she looked at her phone's clock for the hundredth time. I hope they were in an accident and are now in intensive care. Katie hissed angrily, clutching her bouquet of flowers, because that's the only excuse they have for being late. Zoe gasped, looking in horror at the bride's face. Katie, you shouldn't say that. Brandon is wonderful. He would never act like that without a reason. Katie only shook her head and clenched her teeth, almost turning her expensive veneers into crumbs. Did you even see what my followers are writing? She exclaimed. They're saying he dumped me. He ran away. Haters have immediately rushed and remembered all my past sins. My hanging in clubs, dancing on the pole, and over drinking tequila. They say he came to his senses and did the right thing. Can you believe it? Brandon has a reputation as a knight in shining armor. He came from a poor family with brothers and sisters, raised himself and helped his family. And me? I'm still being judged for my past. They even found that video somewhere, even though I deleted it thanks to my dad's lawyers. They say the internet remembers everything. I've built my image of a princess brick by brick, Zoe. And if Brandon ruins everything, there will be no wedding. The girl defiantly threw a bouquet of peonies on the floor. Zoe groaned and awkwardly squatted in her long dress to pick up the flowers. At that moment, the groom and his best man burst onto the platform near the lake where the celebration was to take place. They were breathing heavily as if they had run here. But it wasn't even this that caught the guests' eyes, but their horrible dirty appearance, especially Brandon's. His suit, which Katie had meticulously chosen to match her dress and look good in the shot, was wet, dirty and covered in green slime, sand and mud. He had lost his jacket somewhere 
leaving him in a wet shirt that clung to his body. There was nothing to say about the beautiful style of his hair, wet dark strands hanging down over his forehead and temples. And moreover, the man smelled like he had bathed in a sewer. Don't panic, we are already in place, the best man, Emmanuel, shouted cheerfully, spreading his arms apart and trying to catch his breath. The groom, as a real hero, had to go through fire and water before getting here, or rather only water, but here he is, ready to say his yes and kiss the bride. The guests, who were initially shocked by Brandon's appearance, started laughing. They did not understand what had happened to the groom or through what swamp he had swum to the wedding. However, Emmanuel was able to defuse the situation. Unfortunately, his jokes did not work on the bride. In front of Katie's eyes, a red veil descended. Her heart began to pound rapidly, her pulse echoing in her temples. She rushed down the aisle, straight toward the groom. Brandon, who had just been smiling and trying in vain to fix his hair with his fist, froze when he saw the bride. He immediately noticed the look on Katie's face as she rushed toward him. Loving women don't throw themselves into the arms of their loved ones with that look. It's the look they use when they want to strangle someone. You think I'm going to kiss you? Seriously? She shrieked in anger, forgetting her holy image and the witnesses to the scene. It's better to kiss a toad. At least it doesn't stink so much. You look like a bum. Do you think I dreamed of a wedding like this? A wedding where the groom is late and then shows up looking like a ragamuffin? Katie, what are you doing? A puzzled Brandon blinked. I just didn't have time to change my clothes, but who cares? The main thing is that I'm here. The main thing? Katie was furious. It would be better if you didn't appear at all than in this form. You embarrassed me, disgraced me in front of my guests and in front of my family. I'll be laughed at all over the internet. You ruined the best day of my life. So there's not going to be a wedding. Do you understand? Katie... Trying to calm the bride down, the groom attempted to soothe her. Katie. Trying to calm the bride down, the groom attempted to soothe her. Calm down, I'll explain everything. Leave your explanations to yourself. I do not need them for nothing. The bride wailed hysterically. She sharply raised her hand and gave the groom a ringing slap. Then the girl looked at her palm with disgust. She wiped it on her snow-white dress and turning abruptly, picked up her skirt and rushed away. Katie's emotional performance at her wedding quickly leaked to the internet. However, the girl had only become more popular. While many condemned her behavior, her number of subscribers grew by the hour. Katie, who managed to escape to the resort after the thwarted wedding, no longer worried about the fact that she had acted badly. She would make up with Brandon, maybe, well, of course, if he crawls on his knees. Meanwhile, her popularity was on the rise, which made her incredibly happy. She realized that black PR was also PR, and it was very effective. So, the girl enjoyed the white sand, sun, and sea. But that was until Zoe called, Hey, runaway bride, have you seen the news about Brandon? Or is there no TV on your island? Katie blinked in surprise. What news? I hope he didn't kill himself there out of grief. In fact, Brandon has become a local treasure and idol to thousands of people, Zoe reported. Journalists go to him like pilgrims. And, by the way, they sign contracts with his company. One businessman from Japan made the comment that he was constantly looking for a partner with high morals and family values. So, Brandon's company went international. Katie, you missed out on a great catch. Katie frowned and jumped up from her chaise long. The icy cocktail spilled on her belly due to the sharp movement, forcing her to hiss. Wait, what are you talking about? You can go to the internet and read it yourself, Zoe advised, not wanting to be the messenger that would receive the bad news. Katie did just that and quickly found the latest news about her ex-fiancé. That's how she found out 
why he was late for the wedding and looked so unkempt. It turned out that Brandon and Emmanuel were on their way to the wedding at the appointed time. Their route led along the river that flowed out of the lake. The car stopped at a traffic light and Brandon was lost in thought, looking out of the window. His gaze caught the figure of some boys playing ball by the river. The river was narrow with slimy banks and there were rumours that local businesses were dumping some kind of waste into it. The authorities turned a blind eye to it, probably because the stacks of bills were obstructing their vision. The traffic light changed to green and the car slowly moved off. At that moment, Brandon jerked and shouted, Stop! Stop! The driver frantically applied the brakes. Fortunately, the driver from behind also managed to slow down, but hit the signal, cursing the driver in front. "'What are you doing, Brandon?' asked a dazed Emmanuel. The driver also looked at the groom with consternation. However, Brandon did not pay attention to them. He opened the car door and hurried out of the cabin. He ran headlong toward the river, where a tragedy was unfolding. One of the boys who had gone into the river to retrieve a ball that had fallen into it was already floundering in the water. The child tried to call for help, but immediately swallowed the water. The second child was numb with terror. Brandon only had time to throw off his shoes before he rushed into the river. The boy had already gone under. The river was deep and the water was murky. Brandon tried to find the boy at the bottom of the river, which he did not do immediately. When Brandon surfaced, his hands were trembling with tension and fear for the child. Emmanuel had already run up to the river and stepped into the muddy water. Come on, give him here, he shouted to his friend, holding out his hands. The two of them pulled the child out, and passers-by from other cars, who became more and more involved, helped Brandon get out. He fell to his knees in front of the boy, put his ear to the child's chest, and realized with horror that he was not breathing. He began to apply pressure to the boy's chest, pumping water from his lungs. Then he began to perform CPR, with people crowded around him. Some cried, some called an ambulance, and others filmed what was happening. Brandon did not see them. He wanted to save the child. Fortunately, a miracle happened. The boy began to spit up water. Coming to his senses, he began to breathe convulsively, and then he began to sob. His friend cried too. Brandon sat down on the ground, breathing heavily. He began to shake and took out his cell phone, but it had fallen into disrepair after encountering the water. Emmanuel's phone fell into the water when he was helping his friend. The man waited for the ambulance and the paramedics insisted on examining him. Only after that was Brandon able to go to his wedding. But to his great upset, his bride did not listen to his explanations. Unfortunately for Katie, who only enjoyed popularity for a couple of days, journalists publicised Brandon's feat. They told the whole world about his deed, making the man a grateful knight in the eyes of the people. Everyone laughed at his former fiancée, claiming that such a woman was not a match for such a noble man. If the main thing for her is appearance and not the soul, then let her marry a mannequin, chuckled the commentators. Let our princess go to the Wizard of Oz and ask for a heart, advised others. A wave of negativity descended on Katie. She tried to justify herself and even begged Brandon for forgiveness, wanting to regain the favour of the people. However, the man's eyes finally opened. He forgave her. He did not want to hurt her, but he did not want a relationship either. So... The glow of Katie Star faded, and the star fell from heaven to earth. By the way, Brandon did not brag about his popularity. He believed that he had not accomplished a feat, but had done what any man in his place should have done. Later, the mother and older sister of the rescued child came to him with gratitude. The boy's sister had no followers. She was not a model, but her heart was pure. Brandon was not immediately able to start a new relationship, and it happened later. First, Rachel became his friend, then his fiance, then his faithful wife. What happened to Katie? Brandon didn't know. He didn't follow bloggers. 
He preferred a real life. <laughs> 